Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of my Majora's Mask playthrough. In the last episode, I was able to recover my ocarina. And now I'm going to go back and talk to the Happy Mask Man. And, uh, you know, you know, he said if I get my ocarina, he turned me back to normal. He's teaching me a song right here. I uh, don't remember that piano being there before. Let's go ahead and play this song. The keyboard's giving me a little bit of trouble. Alright, so that's the uh, second song that I've learned in this game. It's a song of healing. I'm guessing that's what I'm going to be using to uh, come out of my forms, I guess. Waving bye to that giant Deku. Okay, so it turns it into a mask, and I'm guessing if I put the mask back on, I'll be able to turn back into my Deku form. I wonder what he's going to feel like whenever I uh, tell him I don't have Majora's Mask. Alright, there we go. I officially have a Deku mask now. Alright, so I don't even have to play the song, I just take the mask on and off. That's nice. There's something more to this, you know, the heavy mask guy. See, at first, you know, I thought the three day countdown was just because he was gonna leave in three days, you know, that's the time that I had to get the mask back for him. And now it seems like he knows that something bad will happen. And I don't know. Kind of interesting. I kind of feel like maybe he's using Link a little bit here. Maybe? I don't know. What are your thoughts? See, like, even his story doesn't really make sense. You know, he kind of explains the power of the mask. But then he says that this tribe is vanished and that nobody knows what the mask does. Another thing that's you know kind of interesting, you know, so far what I've noticed is it seems like Termina is always a, uh, or it seems that it's like a parallel universe, or you know, maybe like a mirror universe to Hyrule. But the, the Happy Mask, you know, he's clearly the same guy from Ocarina of Time, which means that maybe somehow he can travel in between both dimensions. If there are different dimensions, I'm not really sure. Alright, so, I think I've done, you know, for right now, all that I can do inside of the town. So, now that I'm returning to my normal form, I'm gonna see if I can't leave the town. Sorry, my keyboard's giving me a little bit of trouble here. It's not letting me talk to this guy. All right, there we go. I guess having a sword makes you a sir. And we'll 
just pretend that maybe little kids don't go and play with their parents' swords. That guard isn't very good in my opinion. Alright, so besides the observer observatory, uh, it seems like, you know, this is our first look at Termina Field. You know, finally get a chance to explore it and see what's out there. There's this monster up here. I'm gonna go fight him to the first monster on the field. Alright, he's gonna... Okay, he's gonna go down in one hit. It looks like he had a potion inside of him, so I guess... Those will be the monsters I'll be uh, getting my potions from throughout the game. I'm gonna put on my Deku mask here and uh, use this one. Wow. Kinda looks like putting the mask on hurts Link a little bit. But yeah, I'm gonna put on my mask, get in this flower, and I'm gonna try to come up here and you know, see what I can see in the field. Like there's some writing up there in that tree. I'm gonna look at that. I have triggered an event. Maybe this writing is important. Kind of looks like Donald Duck with the hat on. Alright, so it looks like we're getting a little bit of a backstory on the Skull Kid here. Maybe learn a little bit about his motives, why did he take the mask, you know, what's he trying to do. It says that Tattle and her uh, brother were flying around and uh, it seems that they meet the Skull Kid and he's, he had told them that he had been fighting with his friends and I guess they decide they'll be his new friends and that that's what leads to them uh, drawing that picture on the tree. He kind of looks like uh, some of the scarecrows maybe. I wonder is scarecrow a race in uh, the Legend of Zelda series? And if so, does the Skull Kid, is he a, a part of that race? If anyone knows the answer to that question, I'd like to know. Okay, so here's the Happy Mask, man. Happy Mask Shop dude. And, uh, there he is. He's, he's still in that mask. It looks like he's being robbed in the same place that Link had his ocarina stolen. So maybe, uh, that was the Skull Kid's, you know, place to do his deeds. He'd go and rob people in that forest. Let's see where I can get with this flying flower. Where will it take me? Go explore this grass. There's one of those stick plants I remember those. Okay, so it seems like those jelly monsters have different colors, and depending on what color they are, there's different colors inside of them. And that's a really good bird. I'm gonna fight it for a little bit. See if I can kill it. Seems like I just knocked the feathers off of it. Alright, I guess she hit it a couple times and it leaped. Nope, it comes back. Alright. So right now I'm wondering how much of the game will I be spending in uh, my Deku form and in the other forms that I'm sure I'm going to be getting throughout the game. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see what else I can turn into. Kind of, I don't know. It's interesting. It's something that's pretty new for me, as far as you know, Legend of Zelda goes. I've never really seen that before. Yeah, 
think I'm going to keep exploring this field a little bit. But, uh, I don't know, I feel like that's going off a little bit too far. I don't want to go there yet. So I can see on my map, you know, I've got this little red arrow that's telling me to go down to, uh, you know, past where that tree where the drawing was. So I think I'm going to head back there. See what's over there. It seems the monsters spawn pretty fast in this game, too. Which I guess can be both good and bad, depending on what kind of situation you're in. Doesn't seem like there's much going on in this field, but I do see that guy up there flying with his balloon. And he's the guy who sold me my mask in uh, Plot Town. So I think I'm gonna go talk to him and uh, see if, you know, he says that he s sells masks. Or it's not, well, it's my bad. Sells maps. So I'll go see if maybe I can get a new map from him, I guess. After I explore this field a little bit more. The last mass or the last map that he sold me cost 40 rupees, so I was just kind of messing around that field trying to get the money that I needed to buy the, the map. Apparently, I'm not very good at aiming my snot bubble. So this is someone that I recognize from other Legend of Zelda games. Um, his name is Tingle. I don't remember if that's his name in the other games. But I do remember, you know, a little green dude flying around with his balloon. I think sometimes he has something to do with music in some of the games. I'm not really sure. Alright, so I've got two maps here. I've got uh, the Swamp and Snowhead, I think it was. So I guess those are two zones I'm going to be exploring later in the game. I'm going to assume the Swamp is the one I'm going to right now since that map was cheaper. <laughs> Tingle definitely seems like... I don't know. Tingle is a dreamer. That's what I think about Tingle. Alright, so here I am in the southern swamp. I'm gonna go ahead and end my video here. And, uh... I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.